much. Uh, we are running slightly late, but uh, we, we should um, definitely uh, make time in the schedule for questions. So uh, if you could indicate and answer the question at the end. <coughs> question for Johnny first, and then perhaps Daniel, because I'm not going to get a second chance, I know. <laughs> when you talked about uh, Jean Lagnossi, whose book uh, I've mulled over for a, a long time, uh, I, uh, it seems that he's still arguing that the image is in a part is separate in relation to the sacred, as you, you've yes. said. Um, how, do you, how do you think that that apartness is, if it is integrated at all, into the togetherness that you, you've talked about? He gives said, Catholic oh, references yeah. and all that sort of thing, but it seems to me that there's a kind of objectification, latent, if you like, still present there. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. The second thing is that uh, oh, I've gone out of my head. <laughs> yeah, let me leave it there, uh, Daniel. The question about the <coughs> unexposed images. And the, the transformation that go, takes place within the Arctic that you've referred to. It seems to be dependent quite a lot on the subjective condition of the people that are involved. That we're getting an explanation or interpretation or kind of hermeneutic, if you like, of this situation in relation to the knowledge that we have of the condition of these people, which is verified in an indexical way by your image of the boat. Doesn't that take the whole thing out of a very Heideggerian context and put it into a much more subjectivist context? My, the other my one was violence. <laughs> <laughs> the image and violence. That, I how see. Do you interpret that? How do you interpret that? Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, I really like John Lugnancy a lot, and um, I can I number him as a as a, as an ally, a friend, except for the fact he's a bloody Hegelian. You know, and even though he says he's not in many times, if you read his work, as I do, with a tainted, weathered eye, um, which may be accounting for why I think he's a Hegelian, I think that he, he is forced to make the kind of conclusions he makes precisely because he cannot get out of the totalizing realm that he's set up. So he ends up setting up these notions of uh, contradiction well, he has always two, two sides, you know, the sacred, the not sacred. And he, while he then would say, I don't mean by this contradiction, he then goes off and solves it by a contradictory environment. And I think that he's richer than that. I think he's more interesting than that. Um, and it always annoys me when I read his work. Maybe it's, I'm not reading it uh, strong enough or something like that, but I've read it for years and we've known each other for years. And um, I think that if... I said this very respectfully, Jean-Luc, if you're listening out there. Uh, but if he would just give up on the fragment and start thinking about fractals and the way in which one deals with dimensions, you get a whole different sense of how limits happen. And the reason I mention it that way is because it's the digital sort of impact of the world that has made me start thinking about what does it mean to be in two places at the same time? Or how, how do you actually start really playing around with things that don't have edges, don't have, you know, not to, you know, compute algorithms and so on and so forth. What, what, how do you really play with this? When, because to, to use a Euclidean or a Cartesian kind of mathematics and whatever has fantastic ramifications in many things, just not gonna get you into space. So doesn't mean it's all terrible. It just means that if you're trying to figure out how to think with the body, or, or when one thinks of the body, because I, I immediately think all the wrong interpretations of you know, Descartes, because you know, he's not dividing body and mind. But you know, if you think with your fingertips, uh, and you hear with your, your eyes, and you, that, that kind of notion that is very much a typical way of, for me, it's a typical way of understanding uh, a kind of joy in art. That you have, a, you have this kind of, I always say to myself and students and anyone who listen on the street, you know, that if you, you actually pre-plan your artwork, it's going to be terrible. It, it's just, it's like you can't have that kind of logic to it. So what is the logic that you're dealing with? And that logic is, is the sense, the senses or whatever you call it. And when I say logic, I mean that it can be 
replicated. It's not just you're just on a, uh, this vessel that like you know is a genius that then you know just got struck by you know God or somebody and you know then writes something like that. So I don't I don't come from that school. So that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to, to take was trying to steal that particular thing uh, because I think it's such a fabulous book on so many <coughs> levels. This ontological uh, story of the image. Now that was the first point. The second point is the question of violence. Um, I'm always of two minds of that word, violence. Because on the one hand, I think I actually mean corruption more than violence. Violence has this normative thing. And also, I do want to acknowledge that there are things that are evil in the world that aren't the same thing as putting a mark on a canvas, which is, could be considered violent. <laughs> you know, like this kind of thing. The way you have the image, you have violence. The violence in the image are indissociably related to can't separate. I said that, or Jean-Luc said that. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I think that. How can we understand that? Well, I mean, personally, I think that you know, um, it's a problem in his work because the reason he says that is because he's invoking Hegel, um, and he doesn't have to say that. You you don't have to you know you don't have to go there, Jean-Luc. You know, you can go into the dark room. <laughs> I know a couple of very good ones. Um, so you know, I think that it's very important to um, to pry some away from that. Um, so the question to me was um, about subjectivity, and um, and I guess John, uh, you basically say that the story I told is only possible because through the subjectivity of these explorers. Is that that? Uh, well, I think what I was trying to submit is that in these conditions of being abandoned in the in, in the ice. Subjectivity disintegrates. And subjectivity disintegrates because all the normative social constructs, all the representational frameworks through which we maintain and establish subjectivity, they, they, they just don't exist anymore. Um, and at that moment, one is not a subject in the sense of the subject of the crown or a subject of the state, because this connection this is both where he sailed. And what is left is nomadism. And nomadism is, can be conceived of as uh, different from subjectivity. And what I'm trying to suggest is that nomadism has its own aesthetic, not a transcendental aesthetic of the representational image, but the imminent aesthetic of the latent image. Um, what um, Francois Laruel recently named as non-standard aesthetic. There was, uh, did you have a question? Did you? No? Okay, so then there's two more. Um, right, so that now we've suddenly got a lot of questions and we are running really late. Can so you just take one or two questions? Let's take them in the order that the hands come up. So I think, I oh, know I can't remember because all your hands have gone down. Um, so there were two questions here. If you don't mind, I think they were slightly beforehand. So if we could take both of those questions together and then uh, Angus can respond. I'll be very quick, I promise. Uh, two questions, very quickly. Daniel, where was the vagina? Um, <laughs> I've often wondered that. As, uh, well, it is here. <laughs> 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 it, would to, you know, it would be a complete travesty to bring it to the open. Uh, but um, if you really want to know, that's, uh, it's, it's, it's actually the quotation is uh, in the, in the one wonderful brochure we have. Um, it is a quotation from Lucie Rigore, and she talks about the forgotten vagina in terms of the forgotten passage uh, between the cave, the platonic cave, and the outside world. She says, we too quickly move dialect in, in this dialectical space between object or image, light and dark. And she, stri she tries to recover the passage. Sometimes it's called, it's named as Cora. And I name it the late image. And just quickly, Dangerous Ben, um, <laughs> really interested with the idea of you, you seem to be positioning yourself somewhere in between two types of art. One sort of almost theoretical art that's not even, it's too <coughs> dangerous for anybody that exists in its own space, like a brick, you know, traveling round and round. And other art which 
relies very much on social media and interaction and, and the idea of that validation via people's reaction and also the recording of it. So where do you see, do you see yourself as being somewhere in between those two quite opposite things? Because on one hand you've got you know, the theoretical Tatlin's Tower, which was mentioned earlier on, and then you've got all the stuff that you've actually done. Um, well, I think it's an excellent question. Uh, the reality of my work, the actual physical work, is that it's, it is extremely visceral, and it is something that you, the, the, an image of it is, is never going to be the same thing. It is, it is challenging, exciting, and can literally be frightening. And I'd say that is the core of my practice, is my physically relating to materials and objects, and then something else comes out of it, and it then creates an experience that people then have where they directly, physically sort of relate to it, and sort of then also the relationships they have with each other. I mean, we saw the film of the sort of presumed boyfriend encouraging girlfriend to get electrocuted. Nice guy, you know? And, People do that sort of stuff all the time with it. Um, the 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 sort of the social media aspect of it, I I think, is very much a tool. But it has it has grown and it has become this sort of discrete part of my practice, if you like. Um, is it the same thing as the actual physical work? No, it's not. But in the same way that when you open up. Um, you know, if, if we even go with sort of the obvious, we open up a, a monograph on a painter and we are looking at the images within that. We are not looking at the, the work or the same thing, we're looking at a version of it. So, is that? Yep, thank you.